okay in this video we will discuss about the cholinergic system and in next video we will discuss the cholinergic drugs now so starting with the central nervous system so this is your edinger westphal nucleus superior salivary nucleus inferior salivary nucleus and nerves arising from third cranial nerve seventh cranial nerve and ninth cranial nerve and from dorsal vagal nuclei the tenth cranial nerve arises and these all nerves are the cholinergic fibers okay these all are cholinergic fibers which is coming out of the cns so this is the first cholinergic system which is coming out of the cns third seventh ninth and tenth cranial nerve and they are the preganglionic fibers here i have shown okay third cranial nerve this ganglion is ciliary ganglion and this is your post ganglionic cholinergic fiber and it is supplying ciliaries and sphincter pupillae superior salivary nucleus this is your sphenopalatine ganglion supplying mucosal gland nose palate buccal cavity and one collateral branch to submandibular ganglion and it is supplying sublingual salivary gland and submandibular salivary gland and in from inferior salivary nucleus the ninth cranial nerve this is the otic ganglion and post and this this is supplying your parotid gland clear now coming to the this dorsal vagal nucleus so the nerve arising from it is vagus nerve it is a 10th cranial nerve so vagal fibers supplying to pharynx esophagus stomach small intestine large intestine up to transverse colon this is important large intestine up to transverse colon clear it also supplies pancreas liver bronchial tree heart SA node is supplied by right vagus and AV node is supplied by left vagus. So these are the supply area of the vagal fibers. Clear? Now moving to the next from S2, S3, S4. Also parasympathetic fibers arises. Okay, so they are the sacral parasympathetic outflow and it will supply to the remaining part of the colon, rectum and genital organ. Clear? Now parasympathetic preganglionic fibers means this is your parasympathetic preganglionic fibers as well as parasympathetic post ganglionic fiber yes, this they both secret acetylcholine along with this sympathetic pre ganglionic sympathetic pre ganglionic fibers also releases SEH clear sympathetic post ganglionic fiber releases norepinephrine but sympathetic pre ganglionic fibers releases SEH so if you are giving drug which is targeting cholinergic system then it also affect systemic sorry sympathetic system also because sympathetic pre ganglionic fibers is, are releasing Style choline clear now cholinergic system also present in neuromuscular junction which is an example of somatic nervous system not at autonomous nervous system clear now we will focus on the acetylcholine synthesis okay synthesis occurs a new and new transmitter can be synthesized either in cell body or in nerve terminal in cell body generally all peptides neurotransmitter and large molecular weight synthesize here and a small molecular weight neurotransmitter synthesized in the nerve terminal clear so we will discuss about acetylcholine synthesis and the nerve time the nerve neurotransmitter which is synthesized in nerve terminal are norepinephrine epinephrine and acetylcholine so this is your nerve terminal membrane this is your sodium choline transporter choline is transported inside the nerve terminal okay by sodium choline transporter and this choline combining with acetyl coa will form acetyl choline and this acetyl coa is this acetyl coa is coming from mitochondria and the enzyme is choline acetyl transferase and this acetyl choline is packed in vesicle with the help of acetyl choline h plus transporter okay so h plus will be coming outside from the cycle and acetyl choline will go inside the vesicle now this is the vesicle which is containing acet acetyl choline and this have to release in the synapse so this this is your synapto brevin a protein which is known as synapto, synapto brevin and this is your synapto taxin so when this synapto brevin will bind to synapto taxin then it will lead to exocytosis of the acetyl choline but for activation of synapto toxin we need calcium so depolarization current causes influx of the calcium calcium will bind to these two and due to positive charge they will repel each other and they will go apart from each other and this synapto brevin will come and bind to the synapto taxin and then exocytosis will occur okay now some drugs which will block this pathway so the first one is hemicholinium the name itself indicating cholinium means it will block choline transporter hemicholinium the name itself indicating choline so it will block choline transporter this okay the next one is vesemicol the name itself is indicating vesicle vesicle something related with vesicle so it block a acetylcholine h plus transporter this okay the next one is botulinum toxin okay this is 
example of protease okay it is start digesting synaptoglobin and synaptotoxin this botulinum toxin start digesting your synaptoglobin and synaptotoxin proteins clear now the next one is black widow spider releases one toxin that is known as latrotoxin okay black widow fiber leading that latrotoxin and this latrotoxin increases interaction between synaptoglobin and synaptotoxin clear so acetylcholine release will be more in black widow spider if it is a latrotoxin clear now coming to the cholinergic receptors so cholinergic receptor is two type nicotinic receptor muscarinic receptor nicotinic is identified into two types nm and nn and these nicotinic receptors okay these nicotinic receptors are named because it can be activated by nicotine and one most important point that nicotinic receptors are ion channel okay means acetylcholine will bind to it and it is composed of five units five subunits okay one through three these are the five subunit when acetylcholine binds to this unit then they will go apart from each other and creating a pore through which sodium will enter inside and potassium will come outside clear while muscarinic receptor they are gpcr linked receptors and they are estimated by muscarin so their name muscarinic is given okay acetylcholine will bind here and this will start g protein coupled receptor mechanism which we will discuss in different video clear now this nm receptor is present at neuromuscular junction on the muscle okay and acetylcholine will bind to this and this will cause sodium in influx which will generate excitatory postsynaptic potential okay which can cause voltage sensitive sodium channel to open and sodium influx starts okay and causes action potential generation of actin action potential and this nn type of nicotinic receptor will find at this nerve that is uh, at the ganglion okay where presympathetic neuron synapsing with the post ganglionic fibers pre ganglion fibers making synapse with the post ganglion that is ganglion okay now when sch estimate the receptor that is nicotinic receptor this leads to opening of the channels for a short period short duration then again those channels get closed so sch much must detach from that receptor and again bind so that and channels can be open again can be open okay so it sch detaching is must for again stimulating the receptors so for this sch sterase present on the postsynaptic membrane destroy sch clear for this we have supplied with sch sterase what it will do it will act on acetylcholine convert it into acetate and choline choline is reuptaken by the choline sodium transporter now succinylcholine also stimulates nicotinic receptor but its destruction takes more time okay so leading to desensitization of receptor because its destruction is taking more time so it can bind for more time with the given receptors okay so it can desensitize your receptors so it is so this this drug succinylcholine is used in muscle paralysis okay because of the desensitization of receptor it can cause muscle paralysis the next drug is your tubocurin tubocurin inhibit nm receptors okay nicotinic receptors which can also lead to paralysis mecamelamine and trimethoprim it can it inhibits nm receptors so we have separate drugs for inhibiting nm receptor and nn receptor nm receptors means nicotinic receptor present on muscle and nn receptor means nicotinic receptor present on new nerve okay nerve so tubocurin is for inhibiting nicotinic receptor which are present on muscle and mecamelamine and trimethoprim is for inhibiting nn receptors now receptors so two types of receptor as we have discussed m has m1 m2 m3 m4 m5 okay and this i have shown here so draw like this this is m1 this is m2 this is m3 this is m4 this is m5 so those receptors which are coming at upper side so m1 m3 m5 they are stimulatory those which is coming at lower side this m2 m4 they are inhibitory and this is stimulatory that is m1 m3 and m5 are gq type of gpcr okay because muscarinic receptors are gpcr link receptor and out of this this m1 m3 m5 is working as gq type of gpcr and m2 m4 is inhibitory in nature clear now one more uh, point important here is presence of auto receptor at presynaptic nerve potential nerve terminal okay presynaptic nerve terminal has m1 receptors nn receptors m2 receptors so style coin which is released from this presynaptic membrane can again bind to the m1 nn and m2 clear so if stimulatory receptor is here such as m1 then it can lead to auto stimulation or if inhibitory m2 like that then it can cause auto inhibitory so auto stimulation and auto inhibition can also occurs now the next point 
is like this suppose this is your AC node okay and this is your knob parasympathetic knob this is your sympathetic knob this is your sympathetic knob this is your parasympathetic knob so when sympathetic parasympathetic knob gives ACH when parasympathetic knobs start discharging means parasympathetic nerve discharge increases then it will inhibit sympathetic discharge through collateral and vice versa so through collateral it will inhibit this sympathetic discharge of nerve equilibrium how is inhibiting so one collateral is coming from parasympathetic and it will release SCH and this this nerve sympathetic nerve has M2 receptors here and this is stalcholine will bind to the M2 receptor and M2 receptor is a type of inhibitory receptor so it will inhibit release of nerve equilibrium like that when sympathetic nerve discharge increases, then it, it will send norepinephrine from there and this membrane has alpha 2 receptors, so this can inhibit this nerve. Okay, by this way, it will control the action of sympathetic and parasympathetic. Clear? So, sympathetic nerve also have cholinergic receptors, no problem. Now, among the CNS, central nervous system has all types of receptors, okay, NN, NN type of and all five types of M receptors. M1 is mainly present on ganglia. M2 is present on heart and M3 is found in smooth muscle, gland and endothelial cells. Clear? Now we will look for choline esterase enzyme. So there are two types of choline esterase enzyme. That is the butyryl choline esterase and acetyl choline esterase. Butyryl choline esterase is present in plasma. Clear? This is pseudo choline esterase and it is non-specific in nature. Butyryl choline esterase. While as acetyl choline esterase is present in tissues, it is true choline esterase and it is specific for style. Okay? Choline. In plasma, style Choline stress is strongly destroyed by this is style style is strongly destroyed by your butyryl choline stress. Clear? Here only style in plasma. If a style is going, it will be destroyed by butyryl choline stress. Clear? Now, all parasympathetic neuroeffector junction has muscarinic type of receptor present on it. Okay, all the parasympathetic neuroeffector junction. Now, parasympathetic activity is very localized and discrete, whereas sympathetic activity is of diffuse type. This is one of the most important points. Parasympathetic activity is very localized and discrete, whereas the sympathetic activity is of, is of diffuse type. If norepinephrine is released into blood, it can go and stimulate whole the adrenergic receptors, but not in the case with parasympathetic.